It's amazing. You can read the Bible. You can read the Bible a million times. Yeah. And it just still keeps pumping out That's right. new revelation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just got stuck on this verse. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 15. Mm. And you mm. read it and you think, what are you going to bring out of that? And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. That's it. That's all the Lord gave me. <laughs> you try and work out what's going on. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. So I want to share today the best I can to expound this, open, to open this verse up and call it one more time. Mm. Mm. One more time, the Lord wants to speak to each of us. Yeah. One more time. And he spoke to Abraham one more time. The background of this text is Abraham is living in a country called Ur of the Chaldeans. He's an idol worshipper. They're all idol worshippers. And he's from a wealthy family because his father owns the idol making business. So mm -hmm. they've got it all wrapped up here. Mm -hmm. They're the religion. And God sends an angel and says to Abraham, Get out of this place that you're living and go to a place I'm going to take you. And I think if you listen to the undercurrent of what I'm saying, you'll, un un you'll understand what God is speaking to each of us individually in this. When God tells us to move, the first thing we do is ask where. Mm -hmm. And God will always come back and say, that's not for you to know just yet. <laughs> <laughs> and that just cuts against human security. Mm. We just can't deal with that because we like to have all our ducks in order. Mm. We like to know how everything's going to work. So straight away we will feel uncomfortable with God calling us. I'm sure Abraham is no different. He doesn't know where he's going. He doesn't know how he's going there. Mm. There's two things God asks them to do, though, and the second one is the thing that most preachers I've never heard talk about. I've never heard anyone. I'm going to share it with you. Abraham's called to go to an unfamiliar place. And if that's not enough to, to digest, he's also told that he's going to be given a child of promise. And that child of promise is going to bless every nation on this planet. Now, to an old man... That's a hard deal to swallow. Mm. If an angel turned up to Val now and you were married and says you're going to give birth, you would really struggle with that <laughs> <laughs> to a child. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. So you can understand Abraham's got quite a problem going on here in his head. Mm. And his descendants are going to be as many as the stars. And that's what he tells Abraham. And Abraham at this point has got two major tests or two major battles raging in his mind. Both require a cost. And the cost is this, do you trust my word or do you trust yourself? And that's relevant to each one of us today. Mm. Do we trust the word of the Lord or do we trust ourselves over the word of the Lord? This is the most pivotal statement I believe every person on the planet faces. Yeah. Yeah. Do you trust me or do you trust yourself? Do you trust in my word or do you trust in yourself? And Abraham is living in this nation of idol worshippers and they believe in multiple gods. All worship is acceptable. And his father is a craftsman. A craftsman that makes idols. In the Philippines, I've seen this. It's a great business. It's very lucrative. And this is the father of Abraham. And Abraham's approached by an angel, just give up all your security, your comfort, and get out of here. I don't know if you've ever been faced with that statement. I have one other time. And it's daunting. So I speak from experience. It's frightening, it's scary, because your whole trust is going on God. 
And all of us say we trust the Lord, but to what degree do we trust Him? Mm. Mm. How much do we trust Him? What things don't we trust mm. Him with? And what's important here is Abraham is asked to make two major decisions. Number one, leave your country, your place of comfort. Mm. And that's where most preachers stop. But I want to bring out the greater issue that Abraham's asked. Leave your religion the belief that you have because I am going to give you my belief. Yeah. Mm. We have to give up what we believe in before God will give us what he wants for us. Mm. Mm. And the benefit with Abraham if he does this is God says, I will bless you and I will bless your descendants and every nation on the planet. And he's faced with the decision the Israelites were faced with by Joshua. Choose you this day. Mm. whom you're going to serve. Put away the gods of your father. Put away the gods of your fathers that were served in Egypt. And what God is teaching Abraham and Joshua is the same. There is only one God and one way to him. Leave any other mm. belief system behind. We all create belief systems. We all create belief systems where we think we are worshipping God correctly, where we think we're honouring God correctly. But often we bring in, with the true one God, we bring in belief systems that are not correct. Mm -hmm. The Apostle Paul said in Galatians 1 verse 8, But though we or any angel from heaven teach any other gospel of salvation to you, let him be a, a cursed, a cursed. Mm -hmm. You may think, where are you going with this? We're all good. And I want to challenge every single person here today because that's my job. There is a curse on your life if you have linked anything other than the one true God mm. and the way to it. There is a curse mm. on your life, on your household. I've lived under this in the Philippines, so I know what I'm talking about. You cannot blend other beliefs with the one true God. There is only one way to get there, and that is through His Son, Jesus Christ. No other way. The same message God is giving Abraham and Joshua and Moses and Jesus and you and me is leave any other belief system behind and trust my word. So whatever is not of faith is sin. Mm -hmm. Simple. Mm -hmm. If I don't have faith, I'm in sin. That means I've got to look at why I'm in sin. We've got to find the open door, like our sister was praying this morning, open mm. and close. What is the open door that's allowed that sin into my life that I cannot have that level of faith, that I do not believe you, God? This applies to all cultural religions. Mm. And I don't mean to be stepping on anyone's toes here, but I've preached this amongst cultures, and I'll never back down on this. Whatever your religious belief and culture is, it's not correct unless the only way to God is mm. through Jesus Christ. Amen. This applies to lodges, mm. the same. This applies to any systems that believe in doing good and reaching God any other way than through God's Son, Jesus Christ. Mm. So Abraham is faced with this very issue. It's a huge issue in the Church of Jesus Christ today. Mm. blending truth with dishonesty, opening the door for the enemy to get into the church. You can't do it. Like I said, Paul said, let that man be cursed. It's a serious statement. Mm. If we wonder why we have trouble in our households, we need to check these things. Is there a curse over our household? So that's not where I want to dwell on, but I just wanted to raise that and I'm not meaning to stand on toes, but I've got to bring the word of truth. <coughs> the issue of not leaving is the leading cause of compromise in the church today. I think if you could settle one issue in the church, why the church has not succeeded the way it should have, it's because of this. Not leaving things that are unacceptable to God behind. Severing it, cutting it off, getting rid of it out of our lives. I'm all for culture, so please hear what I'm saying. I love culture. I love the food. I love the music. I love the difference. But 
when it comes to the religious side of it, there is only one way yeah. to God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so leaving his place of comfort, Abraham seemed to cope with relatively easy, seemed to manage with it. Many people would get stuck right there. Mm -hmm. But Abraham seems to get over this one. Leaving his old religion, he seems to deal with okay. He doesn't seem to carry that into his faith. But having a child beyond age, well, that's another story. I just can't work that one out, God. You know, just think about it. Having a child around the age of 90 years old. I mean, just, hello, get the white padded jacket out. You're going to get called crazy. You need to see a psychologist. All this is running against the tide of normality. Yeah. What's acceptable in society. Doctors would call you crazy. The psychiatrist, psychiatrist would say, let's lock her up. She's not thinking in her right mind anymore. But see, God sees it from a different perspective. What do you mean you've got to give up? business to go somewhere and you want me to go somewhere I don't even know where I'm going that doesn't sort of make a lot of sense huh? mm -hmm. think about it mm -hmm. God said to you today pack your bags get out of where you are you just go huh <laughs> get thee behind me Satan it doesn't make sense. I didn't write this. God did, okay? So don't get angry with me and don't feel upset with what I'm saying. This is what God said. And it's a lonely place to go when your family and your friends think you're a wacko and you've missed the boat. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay, so I've got a couple on my side. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, when they just don't see eye to eye with you and... Uh, what it does to Abraham, because we say he's a father of faith and rah, rah and he's this great mighty man of faith, but actually Abraham weakens at this point mm. because he can't cope with this pressure on him. And so Abraham decides, well, yeah, I know the, that God told me I'm going to have a child, but uh, I better make it happen and do it my way. I'm sure that's where the song come from. I did it my way. <laughs> And Abraham does what Adam did in the Garden of Eden. And he listens to his wife, who tells him, Hey, your maid's not a bad looker. She'll be the one. God's got his hand on the maid, not on me. You've got it wrong, Abraham. And Abraham doubts for a brief moment. And he takes his maid, and we know the story. And the problem with it is this. God forgives sin, so that's not the deal. The repercussions of the sin yeah. go on for eternity. And we look around today and we see the repercussions of this very problem. Thank God he blessed Ishmael. Mm -hmm. Thank God he did. And Abraham would have felt the weight, I know, of his family, because I speak from experience, working against him. Yet he knew God had told him to do something. And it's a lonely place. I tell you from experience, it's a lonely mm. place yeah. to be in. And Abraham tried obeying God in his own strength. And how often do we do that? There's some nuggets here. Mm. God gave me these this morning. How often we try and obey him in our strength. We do it our way. Mm but not God's way. My sheep hear my voice, the voice of a stranger they don't hear. How many want to please God with good intentions? I do. I don't know about you. I do. We have such good intentions. We want to please Him because we love Him mm. and we want His love back. But often we end up doing it in our own strength. We mm. compromise his word to please him. Mm. Sounds like a paradox, 
but it's a very dangerous one. We compromise his word to please him, and it doesn't please him. We're willing to give up. There's nothing in my life I won't give up. Nothing. I've passed that test already. I've been down that road. Once you pass the test, it's easy. But I have compromised my faith to please God before. You know what I'm talking about. Mm. And now Abraham's insecurity, his lack of faith and trust in God's word creates a situation. It's got ongoing repercussions until now and into eternity. And obedience always brings a blessing, but disobedience always brings a curse. When we feel like we're paddling upstream, when we feel like we're not making ground, we need to look and say, is there a curse on my life? Mm. And finally, Abraham produces this child promise, and then God, for the third time, asks something that raises the bar yet again. Sometimes we think, oh, well, you know, I've got to give up stuff, and all right, I'll pass the test, and we think, oh, I've made it. And then God just raises the bar to a new level. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought I made it. No, you're only on number two rung of the ladder. <laughs> God raises the bar for the third time with Abraham. Chapter 22 of verse 1 of Genesis sums it up, and it's this. Mm. This sums up what's happening in Abraham's life. Verse 1 of chapter 22. God tested Abraham. God tested mm. Abraham. And life is a journey of test. And you and I are not exempt from them as Christians. That's right. And often we're unaware of whom the test is coming from. <laughs> we blame the devil when it's God. Mm. Or we blame God when it's the devil. Because <laughs> we get it mixed up sometimes, let's be honest. Yeah. Ah. Uh, but God has a way of putting his finger on each of our weaknesses, and each of us have weaknesses. Do we compromise his word at these times, or do we submit and receive the blessing that comes after the test? Because the blessing always comes after the test. Yeah. We have to encounter the test and overcome it. Whatever this is in your life, be it money, sickness, whatever, we have to encounter the test before the blessing comes. And we have to overcome the test before we receive the blessing. Mm -hmm. And that's the way the kingdom of heaven works. Mm -hmm. Take your son, verse 2, your only son. Mm -hmm. Here goes, test number 3. First, get out of town. Pack your bags and leave. Second, go to a place you don't know you're going give up your religion. Number three, give up the son of promise that I promised you. That was a miracle. Mm. It just gets a little harder each time. Mm. It doesn't get easier. Mm. The tests don't get easier. They get harder. Because see, God has to know if he can trust you and me. <laughs> he has to know to what extent you're willing to die for him. a pleasure because mm. the blessing is at the end of the test mm. take your son your only son interesting God doesn't say your second son he says your only son mm. remember Ishmael mm. is already an older son at this time mm. and the reason is Ishmael is not the child of promise that salvation will come from does God love Ishmael absolutely if we've had children outside of marriage, outside of wedlock, outside of the covenant, <coughs> God loves them just the same as a covenant child, but they are not the child of promise that will carry the seed of promise with them. Take your son, your only son Isaac, the one whom you love, to the region of Moriah, <coughs> and sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain that I will show you. 
that's pretty difficult. Mm. One thing to give up material possession. It's another thing to give up your own flesh and blood. Mm. That's really hard. That's where every parent would defend the child. I would fight for my children. I'm sure you would too. But Abraham was obedient to God. And he said, okay, I'll do it. And he goes off. And we know the story. And this is where few would pass the test. And all you hear is, what? Mm. <laughs> Sorry, God. You've just gone a bit too far this time. <laughs> no deal. You're a loving God. Get thee behind me, Satan. It can't be you, God. It can't be you saying this because... You told us, do not murder. Mm. You know, it just, it seems to go against. Mm. But Abraham totally surrenders his life. And once again, God knows what's most important to Abraham. And that's mm. where he's trying to lead each one of us to that place. Yes. What is most important to you, to me, in your life? And those things that are more important become idols. And those idols have to go in order for God to bless you. Yeah. Yeah. To the rich young ruler, it was his trust in himself. Not his money. He trusted himself, his ability. To Moses, it was his pride as a military leader. To Peter, it was his fear of losing his life. Mm. But Christ himself. It was his church. What are you willing to die for? Mm. The reply is the same from all. Whether we willingly submit our will or God humbles us, the reply always must be the same. Not my will, but yours be done. Mm. Not my will, but yours be done. And if we don't submit, he will submit us. And in some cases, he will remove us. Yeah. Not my will, but <laughs> yours be done. And Abraham is now ready for this test because he's passed the first two. And it's sad to say so many believers haven't passed the first test even. Leave your comfort zone. Lay it on the altar, and I'll bless you greatly, Abraham. Trust me for supernatural provision, Abraham. I will bring it. And Abraham, by this time, knows God sufficiently that he can trust his word. That's all he needs to hear is his word, mm -hmm. or read his word. It's the same, whether it's the Logos or the Rhema. We are the believe it or we don't. And Abraham, by this time, does Some of us learn after the first mistake or the first test. And some, like me, take a little bit longer. A little bit harder, you know. Mm. And go around the mountain another time. And God brings the same test back again. Mm. And again. And again. And again. And again. And faith is like a ladder. Each one of us is on this ladder called life. And each time a test comes, you do one or two things. You climb to a higher level or you go one more time around the wilderness of life. The only thing I can recommend, and I'm younger than some of you and older than others, I would recommend pass the test the first time because it's painful every time you fail the test. <laughs> There's too much pain associated to failing the test. Mm -hmm. It's a lot <coughs> easier to trust God and say, I don't know how you're going to work this out. <laughs> but, okay, I'll do it. And notice the levels of tests given to Abraham. Each test requires more faith. Mm -hmm. A higher level of faith, a higher degree of faith. And Abraham, to start with, 
is tested in a possible situation. <coughs> Brother, I want you to give those glasses up. Mm. But then, by the third test, it becomes a supernatural test. And you can't rationalize a supernatural test, but you can rationalize giving your glasses away. Mm. You see what I mean? It becomes more difficult. Mm. God waited until Sarah cannot produce children. <laughs> she's barren, she's old. She's past the age of natural possibilities. Unlike Maggie, still looking in her beautiful young age. <laughs> Some of us are questionable, Maggie. Abraham's gone from a possible situation of leaving this comfort zone <clears throat> to the familiarity to a place God has called him to an impossible one of having a child at an impossible age to bear children. It now is a supernatural test. Huh. So the low-grade tests are the ones in the natural realm. <laughs> I'm not going to say they're easy, but they're what God would class as the low-grade tests. Yeah. I remember when I gave away my first car, I don't say this to brag, the difficulty I had. I was a pastor with zero salary. Nothing. I'm so used to that. <laughs> and... I'm in a town where I know absolutely nobody. And God tells me to give up this car that I didn't own a dime on and I was so proud of. And I thought, how am I going to get to church? How am I going to visit my people? Give up the car. And I did. But it was scary. And it wasn't so many weeks after he blessed me with a car, probably five times the value and much newer. No. How does it work? I don't know. You've heard the stories. I don't know. I don't understand it. God doesn't want us to try and work it out. Yeah, that's right. Remember when we gave up a home? That was another level of faith. It was. So these are these tests. I can speak from experience. I'm not speaking as a faith preacher. I'm speaking from experience. These tests become more and more difficult. Until you enter the realm of supernatural tests. Mm -hmm. And that really, really challenges everything you've got. And I saw that when I got healed that night. Mm -hmm. When my life was ready to be snuffed out. So close to death. Supernatural test. They're not placing any value on my life. But placing everything on him. Distrusting. If you're going to take me, that's good. If you're going to leave me, heal me. Because I can't get done what I need to do in this condition. That was my cry to him. So God waited until Sarah's got no possibility to produce. And most people would say, three strikes, you're out, Abraham. You're gone, boy. This one, there's no possibility. You've just wasted everything. Everything you did, you've wasted. She's barren, she's old. You're impotent, Abraham. <laughs> Do you understand this? It sort of doesn't work anymore. Things aren't going to work for you anymore, Abraham. Even if she could produce, you can't. <coughs> so you've got a double whammy here. It's not going to work, Abraham. You go and whack up. And Abraham said, God said he'll give me a miracle. What's the miracle you need? Because the supernatural test is the greatest test of all. Mm -hmm. The one that no man or woman can make happen unless God intervenes. The one when the doctor says there's no hope. There's no more medicine to give you. You're already maxed out. Who do we trust? And at that time you realize everything in this world, like Solomon said, is of no value. Solomon, the richest man that ever lived, ever will live, come to the conclusion, it's all worthless. What is value is God. 
of my relationship to him and with him. What is the miracle that you need? Why is it God waits until the twelfth hour? I don't know that. Because if I was God, I'd give you your miracle as soon as you ask for it. So I don't understand God that well. If I had everything and you come to me and said I need something, I'd go have it. But for some reason, God uses a clock and he waits till it gets right up to the 12th hour. Till the crisis hits. Till all hope is gone. And then God intervenes. Why does he wait until everything is stacked against you and then suddenly he comes through? I think as you get older, this is what I've surmised, I could be wrong, but when you're younger, God just showers his blessings, you know, if you've done it right. He, he just, you know, he just gives. But as you get older, he seems to restrain his hand and his blessing just a little bit longer to see. Do you have the faith to put your trust in me and keep it there, even as you get older? That's my experience. Abraham's going to be a father of many nations. What's the price of obedience? Why is the price of obedience seem so high? Just when you overcome one hurdle, there seems to be another. Oh, only if life would flow smooth like that. But we all know it doesn't. God has designed it that way intentionally. Abraham was a friend of God. He is our descendant of faith, which makes him our example. So whose example am I following? Am I following my father, my uncle, my brother, my friends, or am I following him? And Abraham is a friend of God. But what made him a friend is this. He believed God. Mm -hmm. That's what made him a friend. Mm -hmm. He believed God no matter how bad the heart condition was. No matter how bad the arthritis is. Mm -hmm. No matter how bad that knee is or that foot is or that lung is. He believed God. God was more than capable. He knew his purpose on this earth. And we cannot make him out to be a perfect man. We know Abraham was a liar. He had a beautiful wife and he lies. He lies and says she's his sister. And I guess in some respects she was because it, there was some interbreeding going on in the family. <laughs> he lived in fear. That's what was behind that lie. Abraham is living in fear because I guess when you've got the stunning wife, the bombshell walking around the desert with you, and you've got a lot of people looking at her, you're afraid someone's going to take your head off to get her. So Abraham's carrying this fear because she's so beautiful. Abraham had faults, just like you and me. But he believed God's word. Three times he's tested, three times he passes the test. And despite some hiccups on the way, like all of us, we all have them. It's called life. It's okay to fall off the horse, but we need to get back on it. Mm -hmm. I've got to get back up again. Inevitably, your faith is going to be tested. And if you will be a man or a woman of faith, faith always is tested in the furnace of fire. Faith is always tested in the furnace of fire. You cannot test faith in comfort. No. It's impossible. No. There has to be a cost <clears throat> to test your faith. So the heat will go on you. The pressure will go on. That's the way God works. Mm. Faith has to be tested in adversity. When you can look at the cancer... Look into the face of cancer and you say, by his stripes, I'm healed. Mm -hmm. Even though the surgeon tells you you're dying. Mm -hmm. That's faith. When 
They tell you you're crazy because you're contradicting the entire 10 or 12 years of study. You have to know who you believe. Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> because it's by our profession of faith that we remain on this earth or we mm -hmm. leave this earth. When you can look at the problem and declare, I'm not moved by what I see or by what I feel. If they have to carry me into the prayer meeting, so be it. I'll be praying. I am not moved by what I see or what I feel. That's when you are a friend of God. That's when God will say, you're my friend. You're my friend. You're not looking at the circumstances. You're looking at me. You're my friend. Mm -hmm. What greater privilege to be called the friend of God. Very few were ever called the friend of God because very few ever passed the multiple tests that God placed before them. Whose friendship do you value the most? Whose friendship do you value the most? This applies to us whether we're a child or whether we're nearly 90. Whose friendship is most important to you? That's the true test. Mm. Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. The one ability Abraham had was he knew how God, how to hear his voice and I have to challenge myself every day, whose voice am I hearing? Because the Bible says, my sheep mm. hear my voice, and the voice of a stranger, they do not hear. And of course, we are his sheep. And every day, you and I get bombarded with voices from everywhere. They may be from good people, they may be from bad people, mm. but they're voices. Mm. What do we do with those voices? Are we listening to those or are we listening to him, the shepherd? The voice of a stranger, his sheep do not hear. A stranger to the Most High and a stranger to his covenant. Be careful whose voice you're listening to. Are they a stranger to the covenant? Do not take counsel from anyone who's not living the covenant. Because the enemy will use that person no matter how good they are. And I've got a lot of good unsafe friends. Good in the sense, lovely people. When you take counsel or wisdom from them, you will potentially have the door open for deception. Mm. Only take counsel from the Most High. Mm. <clears throat> not from any man. Not even a pastor. God's word only. <clears throat> The one voice God listens to is the voice of faith. Faith. Faith is what pleases Him. God save me. God heal me. Mm. God, I believe what your word says. Mm. That's the voice of faith. Yeah. Without faith, we can't please Him. Abraham, where are you going? Abraham, come back here, you idiot. What are you doing? Why, why are you... You leave? What do you mean you're leaving? Where are you going? I don't know. I'm not sure. But I'm looking for a place. It's a city. It's a city that's built by God. It's a city where he will provide all my needs. It's a city where he will give me houses that I don't work for. And businesses I haven't. It's a different city, but I don't know where it is because I haven't found it yet. And Abraham heads off on this journey, and all he can say is, I've never been this way before, and I don't know where I'm going. You ever feel like that? I sure do. I don't know where I'm going, Lord. I'll go wherever you send me, but... And then he says, go, and you say, what? Devil, get thee behind me. I don't want to listen. Where are you going? 
I'm looking for a city built by God, whose maker is God. And Abraham went off in search of that city. When is the right time for God's intervention? It seems to be he leaves it to the last minute. Mm. I don't know why. <laughs> but always when your adversity is against you, God will intervene. When we brought the orphanage many years ago, I like to share from real testimonies because you can argue against the Word of God and say it's history, but these are real testimonies. And <coughs> we had no money. I mean, <coughs> no, zero. <laughs> and we had a message. We were in New Zealand at the time. We had a message from a relative of Amy that said, oh, I found some land for you. It's X, Y, Z amount. And it's there. I don't even know where there was. They, she told me. I didn't even know where it was. Gets off the phone, tells me, and, I, and something inside me says, we've got to buy it. I just knew God wanted that to do something. I didn't at the time know it was an orphanage. That's the truth. I didn't know. We brought the land with zero money. We paid it off. I think in less than a year. God just provided miraculously. And then after that land was freehold, I hear the voice of the Lord again come from a little girl knocking on our gate outside the house we're renting, crying out for help that she had been abused and hurt. And to be honest, I'd had enough issues in my own life with children. I didn't need someone else's problems. So you can relate to this. But I was broken by what this little girl was saying at our gate. And Amy let her in and put her arm around her and talked to her. And at that time, God said to me so clearly, you got to build a building for children just like this. I had no desire to hit up an orphanage, none at all. It's just the way God works. Sometimes he puts us in things we don't desire to do. Mm, yes. We have every reason to not want to do it in the natural. Mm, yes. God told me to do it, and I did it. And we had no money yet again, so what we did, when I say no money, I think at the time we had a few dollars in our bank account. Like, what I mean, a few ten dollars or something. So we mm. went and priced one bag of cement, and we brought one bag of cement and took it to the site. It's a step of faith. And today, the, those buildings and properties worth millions of dollars. It's, we don't know any debt. And that's how it started. And that's how God works. God is looking for faith. We have to see in our eye of faith, in our mind, we have to see, what is he saying to me? Me personally. Each one of us he'll speak to individually. What is he saying to me? Where do I fit into this puzzle? Each one of us have, has a different part to play on the chessboard. Mm. Each one of us are different. We look different. We're, we're different in age. But God has a place for each one of us. This is not about one person. Life is about of us working together to fulfill the puzzle God's given us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see how it was going to happen at the time, but faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of what we could not see at that time. I just had a, an idea in my mind, well, there's so many needy children here and there's nothing for them. Jesus said, be it done unto you according to your faith. Mm. I have more trust in him than I do in any of you. i got to say that, and I don't mean to criticize anyone. I love you all dearly. But my trust is in him, mm. not in man. Mm. 
This week we saw the hand of God yet again providing. I think I told you about that. Imagine, this is nothing to do with us. We're helping cement classroom floors. We're an orphanage, but we're actually helping the schools now. Mm. <clears throat> he says, suffer not the little children to come unto me. Why do we limit him? I asked myself that question this morning. Why do we limit God with our unbelief? That's what it is. It's our unbelief. And now Abraham has an even higher price to pay the life of his miracle child. And it's one thing to leave your comfort zone and then it's another thing to give up the child of promise. I don't know how I would have dealt with that one. And God tested Abraham yet again to see if he could trust him with everything. Just when Abraham was about to take the life of that child, God said, stay your hand. You don't need to go through with it. It's a test. Everything in life is a test. Mm -hmm. Who do we succumb to at the time of that test? Verse 11, but the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven and he said to Abraham, Abraham! And he said, here am I, Lord. And he said, don't lay your hand on that child for now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your only son some of you are still waiting for your son to come home your daughter to come home God understands that leave them at the altar don't try and work it out he's got it under control yes, yes. because it's your faith that will bring them home yeah. it's the blessing that's upon your faith of obedience that will bring them home just remain obedient mm -hmm. to God Amen. Amen. and Abraham lifted his eyes up and he looked and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. And so Abraham went and he took the ram and he offered it for sacrifice instead of his son. And then the angel of the Lord, verse 15, called a second time out of heaven and said, By myself, now get this verse, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done these things. And have not withheld your son, your only son. Blessing, I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply you. And all your descendants. That's the promise God is giving each one of us today. He is no respecter of people. Oh, don't cry for your children. Just cry with joy that they're coming home. Yeah. They're coming home. Mm -hmm. And there's a blessing that's upon all that are connected to you. Mm -hmm. Because your faith has been tested and you overcame the test. Mm -hmm. There is a blessing that's upon you that's contagious. And God blessed Abraham and his seed. Mm -hmm. God is blessing you and you'll see. Amen. Always remain faithful. No matter what the test is. Mm. Remain faithful. Mm. And what will happen if I don't do what God has asked me? Oh my Lord. Imagine if Abraham had not done what God asked him to do. Where would we be today? Would we have a father of faith? Mm. Would God have done things differently because Abraham didn't obey God but Abraham obeyed him Chronicles says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro searching for someone whose heart is perfect perfectly aligned to him so he can give perfect support to you wow I want perfect support I don't know about you 
I want his perfect support in whatever I do. And the interesting thing is the promise was that Abraham's children would bless him. Your children are going to bless you. Do you know that? Your children, those wrap bags that are running around the wilderness at the moment, that are causing you grey hairs, are going to be the blessing in your house. Yes, I mean. They're going to bless you. And they're going to bless others. Yeah. Amen. Because of your faithfulness, mm. your children are going to bless you. Don't write off that child that hasn't obeyed yet. <laughs> Don't write off that sister, that brother, that mother, that father that hasn't obeyed yet. Because of your obedience, mm. God is going to bless your household. Mm. There's the promise. Love doesn't hold on to any wrongs. Done. It doesn't remind about the past failures. Mm. It forgives always, Paul says. Mm. It's always patient. Mm. It's always kind. We all fail in this. Come on. Yes, we do. Yes. But all we need to hear it again and again and again. Mm. Love never holds wrongs against anyone. Mm. Paul says in Romans 3.24, all are justified freely by grace. And I'm going to close in a minute. That's a wonderful scripture that mm. I'm just going to bring a little revelation on here. This word, freely. All are freely justified by his grace. That word, freely, is the same word as promiscuity. God is promiscuous with his grace. He's lavishly offering it to whoever wants it. Yeah. Just like the prostitute offering herself to anyone who's willing, God is like that with his grace. The same word on that word freely. God is showering it out. You, you can have it. I don't care what you've done. Mm. That's the past. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter what you've done. <clears throat> And if you're still doing it, just stop it today. It doesn't matter. It's over. My grace is sufficient. He's just chucking it out there. Excuse me for using the analogy, but this is the Greek meaning of it. Like a prostitute offering herself freely, come and take it. Yeah. Yeah. God is doing that with his grace. All we have to do is submit to it. Flirting like a prostitute with grace. Flirting. God is flirting to the world with His grace. Come and take it. It's here. You yeah. don't have to suffer. You don't have to have pain and anguish. My grace is sufficient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It doesn't matter where you've been. And someone says, you don't know where I've been. And I think Paul understood this like we do. He believed he was the chief of all sinners. I guess each one of us believed the same. <laughs> Because only we know our own life right. other than God. Mm. And God says, I have no record of it. Mm. No record. I can't see it. It's not in my book. Mm. I have no record. Freely you receive. Mm. Freely give it. Yeah. Yeah. Freely you <coughs> receive his love. Freely give it. Freely you receive his forgiveness. Freely give it to others who fail. Freely. Mm. Grace says, one more time. Mm. One more time. One more time. I'm here for you. Can you hear this morning the angels say, one more time, mm. I'm calling you mm. to a place that you don't know. A place of blessing place where I'll lead you and I'll guide you. A place, a city that I'm building. All you have to do is come, hear what I'm saying. One more time God is calling. One more time he's testing us today. What is the test in your life that he's testing you with? Father, mm. I know this word is from you. Mm. 
You give me one scripture that even I didn't understand. One more time. You're giving us your grace and your mercy yes, when we fail you. Yes, Lord. Thank you. One more time, you're offering us mm -hmm. opportunities where you want to bless us because you want our family yeah. to be blessed. You don't mm -hmm. want them in the wilderness. Yes, mm -hmm. One more time, you're testing us. Mm -hmm. And each one of us knows what that test is. Mm -hmm. And that's between you and each person. Whatever that test may be, Lord. But I want to declare today that each of our brethren here are overcome as Father. Mm. And they mm. shall overcome by the blood of the Lamb mm. and the word of their testimony. Mm. Thank you for this day, the special day that belongs to you. Yes. Yeah. Lord, thank you for the air that we breathe, but we don't know what our life holds. Mm. Yeah. We don't know what tomorrow may bring. Yes. We only know what the air we've got now to breathe and we're thankful yes. for it, Lord. One more time, Thank you, Lord. let us hear your word. Mm. Mm. Let it penetrate our souls. Mm. Let it divide mm. us from you. Mm. So it becomes more of you and less of us. Yes. Until there's nothing left mm. of us. Mm. And it's only you. Mm. That's my prayer for each one of us today, that we walk in the Spirit. Amen. And we hear your voice. Thank you, Jesus. Bless Amen. you, Father. We Amen. love you. Yeah. We thank you for your word. Yes. We do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless Amen. you all. Amen.